Hello, friends. Welcome back to our show, Text Time with Anil Grandi. I'm your host, Varish. Last week, we discussed about how and what when to file the tax this year. We welcome Anil Grandi, our tax expert. I will brief about uh, Anil Grandi expertise. Anil Grandi is our Forbes 2022 official member with 17 years of experience as a finance controller, CFO, senior executive positions. He has worked in Amazon, Starbucks, PwC, Sun Edison. His passion is to help community, individuals, business owners, to increase their revenue and profits. He has also written so many articles and been a guest speaker for many national events and media channels. So let's welcome Mr. Anil Grandi. Thank you. Thanks, Varish. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today. So tech season is fast approaching and we will be re receiving all the tax filing related documents like W2-1099 from vendors, banks, mortgage, interest, statement, etc. De the deadline to receive them is January 31st, 2022. A common question that most of them have is, should I itemize or claim standard deductions? Please throw some light on that. Sure, Varish. Whether standard or itemized, it is a one segment where you reduce your tax liability, where, where you would reduce how much you owe to IRS. So mm -hmm. every person who over files a tax return, they have a, they has an option to choose either standard or itemized. Mm -hmm. Since 2018, after Trump came into the picture, they introduced uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act 2017, mm -hmm. effective from 2018 onwards. So many people, many individuals, they stopped claiming itemized tax deductions when they file tax returns. Okay. So can you explain why? Yes. So yeah. earlier, we uh, most of us used to try a lot to file itemized tax deductions. But from 2018 onwards, a TCJA 2017 Act increased the standard deductions from $13,000 to the $24,000, almost it is a double. So, and this $24,000 also every year subject to change, subject to inflation. So right now, for the year last year, 2021, the standard deduction was 25100 and for the year 2022, it is $25,900. Earlier, many people, many means most of us try, try, used to try a lot to find only itemized. But now, because of these increasing limits, most of us won't even be eligible to go for itemized. Okay, so standard deduction might be the better option sometime. Understood. Yes. So who are they? few category of people. So there are three types of people who cannot go for standard deductions. So they mm -hmm. cannot get this $25,100. Category number one, married filing separately, where spouse is filing itemized tax return. If your, file is for, your spouse is filing itemized, you have to go for itemized. You cannot go for standard deduction. And mm -hmm. if there is any, if you are changing your accounting period in that year when you're filing for tax returns, then also you cannot go for standard deduction. And if you are filing a non-resident alien uh, tax return, then also you cannot go for standard tax deduction. Okay, so they need to itemize. And taxpayers whose itemized deductions amount is greater, then their standard deduction will also be itemized, right? Yes. The more deductions we have, come mm -hmm. on, you can get a lot of directions. If you have a lot of directions, a lot of expenses, you yeah. may go for itemized tax deductions. Mm -hmm. Just I want to ask you one question to Varish. Varish. Do you know why Sherlock Holmes was audited by IRS? Uh, <laughs> uh, not sure. Maybe like because they were having too many deductions. Yes. Uh, just, okay. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yes. Uh, the more deductions you claim, the more tax savings you have. Of course, it triggers audits also sometimes. Wow, well, I'm learning also. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next one is like, what deductions fall under itemization and should be a separate form to be filed for claiming them? Yes, Varish. Okay. So you need to file a separate form called Schedule A along with your individual tax return form number 1040. Mm -hmm. So as I was saying earlier, some specific set of expenses are come under itemized deductions. The first one is I want to talk about medical expenses, medical and dental expenses. If you are incurring more than 7.5% of your adjusted gross income towards unreimbursed medical expenses, come on, you can put it under itemized. Then if you are paying any state and local taxes, 
that is the second category and the third one mortgage interest if you are paying any mortgage interest on your house properties then that is also has to be included third one and the fourth one is charitable donations if you are doing any donations to any charitable organizations 501c organization that also considered as a fourth one and the fifth and last category is personal casualty and theft losses if there is any natural disasters by the federal government and mm-hmm. if you are incurring any expenses towards the natural disaster or uh, then the, if you are incurring those expenses also considered under itms all these expenses together you should exceed the standard deduction amount which is $25100 for the last year then you can go for itms tax deductions wonderful well, it's really a good information for our viewers i'm pretty sure like our viewers are making notes of that so going forward like what kind of medical expenses can be claimed as a deduction and are there any rules to claim such deductions yes varish so uh, the first one we're talking under schedule a itemized risk medical deductions and i don't have time to in to explain in detail but i strongly recommend if anyone has a lot of medical expenses the view i recommend viewers to refer irs publication 502 where they have listed down what are types of expenses you can claim but just to simplify it if anything you are paying from your pocket which is not reimbursed by any of by your employer or by your insurance company those expenses can be considered for your uh, itemized deductions calculations all right so coming to state and property taxes what are the key points here yes so you there is a limitation you can claim state and local tax payments if you have done anything you can claim those expenses but subject to maximum of $10000 per year and what are the if you are apart from the regular state taxes if you incur any expenses towards your property and real estate taxes or if you are paying any taxes when you buy a land or when you are buying a vacation home or when you buy a primary home or even you are buying any vehicles or cars or RVs those if you are paying any local taxes those taxes also can be considered under this $10000 by uh, uh, category so what about mortgage interest and insurance premiums mm-hmm. so just to encourage individuals to buy more primary houses irs has has been allowing some mortgage interest expenses as a tax deduction under itemized if you have any mortgage loan if you have taken it after 2018 then you can claim interest on up to loan of $750000 if the loan is taken after 2018 whatever interest you pay on the mortgage loan up to the loan amount of $750000 that can be claimed as a deduction if your mortgage loan was taken before 2018 then up to a loan amount of $1 million you can claim it as a tax deduction mm-hmm. all right so that's we are going in the right direction and apart from that like uh, just to add a little humor so that uh, no offense but i can ask one question so how did the cpa break their leg <laughs> good question varish uh, uh, i should say that uh, uh, whenever they, may, they miss their balances then definitely yes we break our legs <laughs> really close yeah i can say that <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> going forward like moving on the charitable contribution anything new here um yes varish mm-hmm. i always believe that uh we all are fortunate we are here and settled down in america and we are fortunate enough to have a great life at the same time we do also have a responsibility to give back to the society right. and irs encourages that whenever you do some donations to any charitable organizations you can claim tax deductions but before before it used to be unless you file an itemized tax deduction tax return you cannot enjoy any charitable donations tax deductions but now because of the concern in the covid situation for the year 2021 every person every family can claim up to $600 towards charitable deductions on top of the standard deduction which is $25100 on top they can also claim $600 as a charitable donation if they have supporting documentation and if you are filing an item as a tax deduction you mm-hmm. can do charitable donations up to 
hundred percent of your adjusted gross income. It means whatever income you have, the entire amount also you can do a charitable donation. And it earlier it used to be only sixty percent, but for the last year, for the year two thousand twenty one, there was an exception. They say that up to hundred percent you can claim as a tax deduction. Okay, nice. So as like we always want to save money from the taxes as well as our incomes. So going forward, like what are the tips to maximize the deductions? Yes. So that's where all the planning comes up. So mm-hmm. if you can plan your expenses in before, before. at the beginning of the year or for the next couple of years you can plan now you may have a more opportunity to save more taxes as i was saying medical expenses can be deducted only if it is exceed 7.5% but mm-hmm. if you are expecting any surgeries or procedures in the next couple of years in the next near term soon i recommend you to bunch it bunch all those to do to expedite all those things into one year rather than doing those medical related uh, procedures are expenses incurring expenses in the next couple of years try to bunch it in the same way i know most of the viewers do lot of charitable donations maybe every year you are doing 5000 dollars as a charitable donations instead of doing 5000 5000 5000 5000 every year rather bunch your expenses do it in this year so that you can get more tax deductions under item as a tax deductions so the the solution is or the recommendation is plan ahead to save more taxes so planning is very very important the another question is if you have property in india can we deduct mortgage interest of the loan very good uh, question varish i get this question so many times because mm-hmm. most of us hailed mm-hmm. from different countries of outside of us we all are immigrants so mm-hmm. it's very common to have some properties in our home countries here what irs says is at irs tax act says if you have any primary home mm-hmm. even outside of the country that and if you are paying any mortgage interest that amount can be deducted under item as a tax deductions assume if you are having one house in us one house in india or malaysia or where where your primary home is mm-hmm. as long as you are not rented out that property you may mm-hmm. be going whenever you visit that place you may be using that property so the end if you are paying any interest on that mortgage interest on that loan that mm-hmm. amount can be claimed as a tax deductions okay so if we have a uh, i mean like if we have uh, any any renting is going on on such kind of property then okay if there is any rent then we need i recommend you to disclose your rental income here and separate schedule is there it's called schedule e where you disclose your rent disclose your rental income and claim all your expenses it can be mortgage expenses uh, mortgage interest expenses you can claim depreciation you can claim any maintenance expenses any relevant expenses you can claim. so as we are discussing now about itemized tax deductions or standard deductions only primary homes will come into the picture if any rented properties that we will be covering in some other episode but yes you can claim interest on your rental properties also uh all viewers have another question people who are filing standard deductions are there any other deductions they can claim to optimize tax savings yes varish this is a very good question most of the viewers might not know the answer for this yeah. everyone think mm-hmm. if have, if they are filing a tax return on the standard deduction they think mm-hmm. that's what the maximum they can claim as a tax deduction okay. for the year 2021 it is 25100 dollars but mm-hmm. on top of that there are few more expenses like health savings account if you are doing any char- any contributions to your health savings account for the last year it is up to $7200 if you contribute that can be a tax deduction and mm-hmm. if you are doing any charitable donation check covered up to $600 even though you are filing a standard deductions you can claim it as a expense up to $600 on top if you are a tutor if you are a, a qualified tutor or teacher then you can claim 250 dollars towards covid related expenses okay if you are incurring anything those expenses also can be claimed and very very important retirement contributions like 401k whether you are contributing your to your 401k account through your employment or even you are self employed or you are a 1099 contractor and if you have a solo 401k whatever mm-hmm. is there any retirement contributions retirement account contributions can be tax deducted 401k and ira 
if you are having an independent retirement arrangement it's called ira and you can contribute up to six thousand dollars that is also tax deductible and for your wife also you can contribute for your spouse also you can contribute that is also a six thousand dollars and on top of that health insurance premiums mm -hmm. if you are paying we all have health insurances yes. medical insurances or health insurances every month mm -hmm. those expenses also can be claimed as a tax deduction if you mm -hmm. are an employment if you are in w2 generally they deduct from your monthly paycheck which is as a pre-tax but even you are a self-employed even you are a 1099 contractor whatever expenses you are in incurring towards mm -hmm. health insurance premiums that is also tax deductible and student loan interest if you are having any student loan that is also tax deductible to some extent based on your income levels and the last one is alimony payments if you are if you got divorced and mm -hmm. if you are doing any payments to your ex-wife or your ex uh, your kids or ex-kids those and the, the and those are alimony payments and mm -hmm. if your divorce order set the sign the final settlement by the court was given on or before 2018 and mm -hmm. if you are paying any money to them that is a tax deductible but if the court settlement has taken place after 2018 in the then you cannot claim any tax deductions for that so yeah that's a that's a good information for our viewers and also like our viewers are normally comparing the last year with this year so they have the they want to know like what are the recent tax changes for this year which has an impact yes varish that is also a very very good question because the, even though you have been filing tax returns for quite some time mm -hmm. last year because of the covid there are changes have taken place the first one most important i want to talk about is recovery rebate so mm -hmm. if you receive any check last year because as part of the recovery rebate because of the covid government has irs has sent some checks to all the taxpayers as mm -hmm. long as they are within the income thresholds and on average your income is less than $150000 married filing jointly then mm -hmm. you might have received $1400 per person in your family and you are dependent also every person in your family receives 1400 dollars and that is completely tax free you don't need to pay any taxes and if you are eligible because your income is less than 150000 dollars but you have not received this check by whatever the reason then you can claim that money when you file your taxes this year the second one i want to talk about is child tax credit the child tax credit earlier it used to be two thousand dollars for every child you have even you you gave birth to a child on december 31st that birth that boy or girl will get you two thousand dollars as a tax credit and mm -hmm. but, but for the last year for the 2021 they increased to three thousand dollars per kid and if the kid is less than six years you can claim up to three thousand six hundred dollars as a child tax credit so these are the bigger changes and there is one more change also big change unemployment income mm. because of the covid many many people lost their jobs right. but government came forward and they supported by paying unemployment income so mm. if you receive any unemployment any un unemployment income in general it is taxable but for the year 2021 for the first 10200 dollars completely tax free per person if you are married filing jointly and if you and your husband both have our spouse both have received this up to $20,400 together it is tax there is no tax it's completely tax exempted and the other just two more points i want to add which is which are very popular for a ppp loan most of you might have received if you are a self employed if you are a business owner you might have received ppp uh, paycheck protection program and the loan was written off completely and forgiven that is completely tax free 100% tax free you don't need to pay any taxes on that income and if you have received any eidl loan economic injury disaster loan that is no that is no not connected to any tax there is no tax impact on eidl it means you don't need to pay any taxes on the loan because it is a loan it is not your income and the last one employee retention tax credit if we have received any employee retention tax credit for the last year because your income got impacted by 20 percent in any quarter if you received that is taxable for the 
year 2021. So these are the major high level uh, changes which I want to bring it to our viewers attention. Thanks, Varish. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful, valuable tips, Anil. If followed, uh, the taxes can be reduced. Before we wrap up the session, would you like to summarize or share anything else? Uh, yes, Varish. So the very, very important part I want to uh, educate our viewers is you, I, re I request everyone to get some education on this. But please watch this video again if required. Build your knowledge whenever you file your tax returns. Spend some time with your CP or an accountant or a tax pro and ensure that whatever we are discussing our tax reductions are being implemented. Because when you go in the last minute to file your taxes, all accountants or tax guys are very busy. They may not have a lot of time to go through in detail. But if you can ensure that they are implementing everything, you may be saving few thousands of dollars with all these tax reductions or credits what we discussed. And most important, don't delay filing your tax returns till last minute. If you have, you might have received all your documents by now and go and file taxes soon now. The, the early you file your taxes, you get the refunds also much faster. If you are delayed further, your refunds also will be delayed later, will be delayed. So don't delay and, uh, and please, uh, please file your taxes as soon as possible. Yep, this is what my two. Uh, yep, this is what my points to add, Marish. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, we come to the end now, and thanks, Anil, for giving us time today. And our viewers must have taken some notes, and they will value their dollars what they are making hard work for. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Marish. And thanks to uh, Mana TV for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, friends, we have come to the end of this interesting topic: standard versus itemized deductions. So, we have come up with more interesting topic, tax deductions and credits. St stay tuned with us. See you next week. Bye.